All these monks hanging out there, like proper ones and that, you know. Uh, not like the ones off Robin Hood or anything like that, like proper ones with skinheads and that. And um, we would, uh, you know, we would end up going around all these little villages and we met some great spiritual people there, do you know. Not that I'm, I, don't, I don't really think I'm affected by that in any way, but it was just, it was a sense of well-being on my behalf one morning and the sun was shining and there was lots of animals knocking about. Here's another Sunday morning call You hear a banging on the door I think it's about fucking taking too much drugs, watching everyone fall away and uh, you coming through the other end and no one else. It's the one that touched me the most, yeah. Because it was... And it's my favourite song. I don't sing on it. Ain't that weird? The chorus is about... It's a tiny little bit about... how we, uh How in England we, we, we're quite fascinated with why famous people and rich people act like absolute knobheads 24 hours of the day. And we're fascinated by that. We put them on the front cover of newspapers and uh, that's basically saying, well, you know, is it any wonder why people act like that? Little James is my most personal song on the record, yeah. I'm, I'm proud that he's done it in a way because it'll give him the confidence to go and maybe write more. Well, it's not, I didn't, I didn't go out of my way to write a song, you know what I mean? I've just been playing about with this little tune. And then, you know, I've got a lot of songs that I've been doing that for years, you know what I mean? Little bits and bobs that I never really finish them off. I always sort of like just go, oh, fuck it, leave it, and come back to it later on. And that was the first full song that really just come to me really easy because I've been around him. And that's it. I've just done it in three minutes. Little James, we're all the same. Always seem to look to us. We were meant to be grown ups. Thank you for your smile. You make it all worthwhile to us. I do, I do like the song. I like the melody. If anyone put it on an album, means it's a good song. The song works on an acoustic guitar, so therefore it, it would work with a big band behind it. But I didn't think about Hey Jude at all. I'm not that much of a wanker to think like that, you know what I mean? That's not my problem, you know what I mean? I went in there and thought about James and wrote it about him, and that was the end of it. He's got to grow up pretty soon, you know. Anyway, that was my little bit, sorry. He's only 27, and I remember what I was like when I was 27. And I wasn't far off what he's like. I think we've got a lot closer musically, yeah. We've always been close. All the nonsense that gets wrote about us, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, gets blown out of proportion. You know, with the two band members leaving, then, yeah, we've, we've got a lot closer. What's the best thing about it is the usual, you know. He pulls no punches and he says what he means. My words are my thoughts. Yeah. They're both the same, I'd say. I think he'd do well to sit down and speak to somebody like John Lennon. I think John Lennon would tell him to sit down shut up and just listen for once in his life instead of talking all the time. That's just because he thinks he's John Lennon, though. I'm not asked about, you know, at the turn of the next century being uh, the songwriter of the 90s and all that. That'll be irrelevant to me once I go. I'd like to be the best songwriter of next year. It's about as far as I go. No, oh, I reckon I'm better than Elvis, definitely. I don't know what Elvis would think. Elvis would probably snort, Liam. <laughs> well, I'm a knobhead when I'm drunk, aren't I? And I'm the coolest cat in town when I'm sober. These were having a good jolly up, and I was with him yeah. while they were having a jolly up, you know what I mean? I was sitting there with my bottle of water and that, going, go on, have another one for me. If I could put down on paper what, 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 I, what I actually thought inside my head, I'd be fucking really good, I think. But I'm just, I have, I'm quite... There's something to do with being, half of it is like laziness and the other half is not being able to articulate your feelings enough. He thinks I feel. That's too simple a way of putting it. That's what it's about, isn't it? Feelings. Because that implies that Liam's not a thinker and that Noah's not a feeler. 
We've had a hiccup. We never thought we'd have things like that happening to us. You know, I mean, we didn't think two members of the band would leave. We just thought we were in it together forever. No, they're gone now. That's it. You can't. It's not. You can't just pick and choose when you want to be in a band. You know what I mean? It's like it wouldn't be fair on on Gem and Andy now if Bone had phoned up tomorrow morning and said, "Oh, I've changed my mind." It'd be like, "Well, I can't do that, man," because some other some other geezer now is is, is in the group, and that's it. That's not what Oasis is about. You don't make decisions like that. On the farm and the band, you know what I mean? You've got to think hard about it, and I'm sure they did. And we thought hard about getting two other members in and carrying on. As soon as I started to play with these guys, it did feel right. Um, and they've said that as well. I mean, I think that it is hard to find people to, that you can play with, just on a musical level. Noel used to play lead a lot. Bono just play rhythm. Like Noel's not playing as much lead now, you know what I mean? But Gem's doing a bit of lead and they're both doing a bit so he can, you know, like champagne soup and over there's bits that Gem will play lead on and, you know, you know what I mean? They'll swap about, who's, you know, and it works a lot better. You know what I mean? So Noel's a good producer. Even just seeing the way he works, is it's kind of a, um, it, going back to the James Brown thing about it, it's not a whip cracking thing, it's kind of a, it's a, Everybody wanting to do the best they can, but him actually allowing you to do that, which is, that's, that's, that's production in itself. And I'm sure he knows that I'm not gonna strut out there with this pointy headstock guitar and go <laughs> Same as you're not gonna go, I need a five string bass without a head. You know, it's kind of everybody's in the same ballpark. We know what you can do, you know. And we just went, look, you just fucking do what you do. Don't play what Bonehead play. We don't want you to do what he's just done, you know what I mean? We want you to do what you do, and if it's a bit fucking over the top, we'll stop you. You know what I mean? We just want you for anything that you get from the old songs, you put into your bit, you put your bits into it that you feel you can hear. And if they're good, we'll keep them in. And if, like, you know, they're a bit over the top, we'll tell you. I don't want to change it. I think it's great how it is. It's going to be weird to see how it works out, but, I mean, it's all very exciting because, number one, because they're great musicians, you know? It's weird joining this band full stop. And they're, they're at that point where they're not that cynical about it yet. It's things like this throughout your life are gifts and you've got, to, you've got to say thanks. That's what I believe. Hopefully that the five of us that are in the band now will have played, will make more albums than the original five did, so... There's been too much said about what things mean. Let's let people make their minds upon it. I mean, you know what I mean? Right. I'm not here to share my views, you know what I mean, about it. People should just listen. This is the music factory.